Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, I thought it would be fun to look back at the very first ever Pokemon TCG set, the base set, look at the top 10 cards, and then tell you how about on Friday, that is this coming Friday, that is Friday the 3rd of May, I'm going to be giving away five fourth print base set booster packs, and I'm going to tell you how you can join in and try and win those as well. Uh, fourth print is basically a, a fairly low run rare print, mostly found in the UK, with a different copyright. Well, basically, it's 1999 to 2000 rather than 1999. It's a pretty big deal. So, yeah. In a minute, I'll tell you how you can try and join in and win some of those. Now, the thing about the base set is that there was quite a small set comparatively to, you know, a lot of newer sets. And when you start looking up on a lot of older cards, obviously these cards got better or worse when other sets came out shortly after. So, this is the best top 10 list I can give you right now. We're going to start off with Clefairy. Clefairy was a pretty cool card because it had Metronome. Free energy, let you choose one of the defending Pokemon's attacks and copy it, basically. But honestly, it was mostly really good when we got Clefable later. So, it's really difficult to look at Clefairy and see exactly how good it is in the base set. Because honestly, in base set, partly due to the fighting weakness, more on that in a moment, and 40 HP being terrible, Clefairy's not great, but then it gets really good later on with Clefable. So, it gets an honourable mention just before we get to the top 10. In at number 10, I am putting a pair of Pokemon. I'm putting Staryu and Ponyta, which might seem like weird bedfellows, but actually if you look at the cards, they've got something very obvious in common. For a single energy attachment, remember we had double colorless energy at the time, very important, you can do 20 damage. And at the time, we also had plus power, which let you do an extra 10 damage. So actually what you could do with cards like Ponyta and Staryu is try and play a bunch of plus power. You could do anything going first. There was lots of draw power. It, it was not as hard as it might seem. And you could go for full on turn one donks with these cards by just trying to grab a couple of plus power and hitting for weakness. Not exactly the most competitive cards in terms of winning all the tournaments at the time. But certainly if you go back and play base set and you want to get a little bit cheeky, these are cards that could be fun. In at number 9, we've got Arcanine. And Arcanine's another one of those where base set's weird because a lot of the cards just seem too expensive and too underpowered, at least looking through modern eyes. But Arcanine, free energy, 50 damage, discard a fire energy to do it, or 4 energy, 80, and it does 30 to itself. Arcanine is good. Arcanine has a lot of HP for the time, 100 HP on a stage 1, and Arcanine has got some attacks to do a lot of damage, and honestly, that's what you need to know about Arcanine. In at number 9, we've got Electrode, who actually pairs up very nicely with Arcanine. Uh, as a fun little side note, we would get another Electrode very quickly in Jungle, but we are, of course, talking the best cards from the base set. Also, I should have made this clear at the start, but if I haven't already, we're going for the best Pokemon in the base set, not the best cards in the base set. If we're going for best cards and we got all kinds of ridiculous trainer cards, we're not worried about that today. So Electrode then, it's not the attack. Free Energy 50 is, it's not horrendous, but it's not good. But we've got Bazap. You can knock out Electrode and attach it to one of your Pokemon and it provides two energy. It's good. We didn't have much like that in the early days of the base set. So this was awesome. Also, I just showed you Arcanine. Like I said, this was pretty gosh darn good with Arcanine. Now, in at number seven, we've got Venusaur. And I'm going to spoil the surprise here. Jarazar's not on this list. I know we're talking about Venusaur. Jarazar's not actually very good. <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't want to be rude. But, um, yeah, Charizard's not that good. It's too expensive and all of that. Yeah, there is an argument of, well, you know, four energy, do 100, and then you've got to discard two, but just reattach a double colorless energy and go. Charizard's fun, but it's not one of the best cards in the base set. I'm sorry. Venusaur is, though. 
because you've got the Pokemon power, Energy Trans. This says as often as you like during your turn, you can move a Grass Energy from one of your Pokemon to another one of your Pokemon. You can just move your Grass Energy around the field. So you attach your Energy everywhere, you know, spread it out a little bit. And then when Venusaur's ready to go, you move the Energy up and then start firing off attacks with Venusaur. It's a lot of fun. Plus, we should also mention Pokemon Center. Pokemon Center, great card. Really good card. One that absolutely sang with Venusaur. Because basically what it let you do is heal one of your Pokemon. But with the downside of, you've got to discard all the energy attached to them. That's a little bit of a pain. But it doesn't matter. Because actually what you do is you move the energy off of Venusaur, then you heal with Pokemon Center, then you move it right back. Love it. Absolutely love it. This card was a lot of fun. In at number six, we've got Chansey, who I kind of want to put higher, but I don't know if I can. And Chansey had 120 HP as a basic Pokemon. That is the joint most HP you see in the base set. You know, and the other ones like Charizard's got 120 HP. These are the two highest, and Charizard to stage two. Nothing beats Chansey, and only Charizard can even tie with it. Huge HP. Plus, for just a double colorless energy, you can basically buy yourself a turn of immunity. And then for four energy, 80 plus 82 itself, which was big. Don't forget, we did have Defender at the time, which basically reduced damage done by 20. So you could actually attach multiple Defenders, and you could attack with Chansey and survive a little bit longer. Chansey was fun. Very, very big. Since we're halfway, this might be a good time to stop and tell you how to win those base set packs I mentioned a minute ago. On Friday, I'm doing a WhatNot stream. Use my invite code whatnot.com slash invite slash the Wossy, and that will give you £10 credit. And basically, you can come along and then enter the auction, and if you buy something, you will be entered into the draw to get yourself a base set booster pack. Fourth print, we're giving five of them away, and there will be some cards there which are under £10. So if you join with the invite code, there will be cards that you can essentially buy for free, just pay shipping, and then enter the draw to get those base set booster packs, which sounds like fun, right? I think it does. I'm a little bit excited. Now, coming in at number five, we've got Farfetch'd, and Farfetch'd isn't a very exciting card. But it resists Hitmonchan. And we'll get to Hitmonchan in a minute. Resisting Hitmonchan's a big deal. It means Hitmonchan does like naffle damage, which is wonderful. It does max that at 10 damage. And free energy 30. Now, to be fair, single energy, and you can do 30. And if Tails, it doesn't do anything. And you can only ever use this attack once while Farfetch is in play. But as a turn one play, there are some 30 HP Pokemon around. Why not? But yeah, 30 damage, surprisingly good back then. Resisting Hitmonchan, good. Uh, the problem is it might have resisted Hitmonchan, but it was also weak to Electabuzz, which was a whole nother problem. In at number four, we've got Alakazam. Now, this bit is a little bit awkward. These few cards, you could probably switch around the order a bit if you'd like. I'll leave it up to you. I'm putting Alakazam in at number four because it's got the Pokemon power damage swap. As often as you like during your turn, you can move one damage counter from one of your Pokemon to another as long as it doesn't knock them out. Of course, Chansey is 120 HP basic Pokemon. Great damage sponge. Great target for this. And then, of course, Pokemon Center will heal it. Jobs are good un. And the theory here is that you just stay alive forever. The reason this comes higher than Chansey is that Chansey on its own is a bit meh. Alakazam can pair with a bunch of other stuff. In at number three, we've got Blastoise. I love Blastoise. Blastoise makes me very, very happy. Yeah, they were called Pokemon Powers back then. And then Pokemon Bodies later on when there were passive abilities that were just kind of always there. Nowadays, we just use abilities. And they let you just attach as much water energy during your turn as you like. Now, Blastoise's attack was fine, 
free energy, 40, and you did 10 more for each water energy, but you could only actually put it up to 60 damage. But we would very quickly get Articuno in Fossil, and Articuno was really when Blastoise came around. So there is an argument here that maybe Blastoise doesn't deserve it, because you kind of needed Articuno from Fossil to make it really good. I'm going to leave that one up to you. All I can tell you for now is Blastoise was great, but it did get better when Articuno came along. Now, in at number two, we've got Electabuzz, and the one and two I feel very, very, very good about. Basically, Electabuzz was a basic Pokemon that was very, very, very efficient. And it really was as simple as that. Single energy, 10 damage, flip a coin if heads paralysis. Two energy, 30 damage, and you flip a coin. If heads, it goes up to 40. If tails, you do 30, and then 10 to yourself. But basic Pokemon, good single energy attack. And again, 30 damage back then was pretty good. And honestly, this is why Farfetch became kind of a bit annoying. Because a single Thunder Punch would KO Farfetch straight up. Which was a little bit of a pain. Electabuzz was a basic Pokemon that did too good damage for too few energy. And that puts it in at number two. But in at number one, we got Hitmonchan, which is basically better Electabuzz. This was the best card in the game. And it's one of those cards where, on the face of it, 70 HP, single energy 20, free energy 40. Especially if you're coming to this with modern eyes, it doesn't look great. But that's the thing. It was actually phenomenal because, I mean, compared to a lot of the other Pokemon I've shown you, Single energy, 20 on a basic Pokemon was nuts. Being able to do 40 for free was pretty gosh darn good. Obviously, I've told you we had stuff like plus power as well, so Jab could actually do more than that. And this built up pretty gosh darn quickly. This ended a bunch of games before they even got going. So there we go. Those are the 10 best cards from the base set, and now you know. And like I say, do come and join me on my Whatnot stream on Friday. We are going to be auctioning off a bunch of base set cards, including a bunch of hollows, including a Hitmonchan and like free Chansey or something. And we are going to be doing those giveaways for the base set booster packs. So come join in if you are so inclined. For now, tell me what you think about these base set cards. Tell me which were your favorites. Tell me your memories. Tell me anything you want to tell me in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.